I often talk about how the people, you know, they have to get out of their traditions, their, their theological doctrines and theologies and, you know, and ideals when they come here. Because um, we're in a new and better way. And make no mistake about it, everybody can't handle this way now. None but the righteous. Because this is not a way that is going to make people unholy. This is a way to press people to be holy. You can't, you can't endure the press, you'll be pushed right on out. Well, we've been pressing this way for some time and, and um, I don't see myself declining. I haven't. I mean, I'm getting better as the, every, every, every year go by getting more holy, more righteous, more content. I, I, I'm serious. Bless the name of Jesus for that. You know, you look out there and you see there's many, many different preachers out there. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, people, they can really deliver that word. What disturbs me is, it's one thing for a person to preach the word and teach the word, but what disturbs me is, is just the power of that word not being made manifested. The power of the word not being demonstrated after the preaching of the word. There's no way you can get by that when you read the gospels of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Whenever the true word of God is being preached, and if that preacher... Um, has any ability at all, the power of God will be demonstrated. Amen. And I think, um, you know, because of our culture and society, we develop a very reserved attitude towards God. We really have. And a, a preacher that can preach the word and teach the word, but yet has no power to deliver, is not a preacher of God. It's people who went and went on their own, was sent on their own, or sent by somebody else, but it wasn't sent by God, was not sent by God. Because when a preacher is really truly sent by God, he possesses the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver God's people. Amen? And that's just a factual truth. Amen. Well, Stalin, come up here for a second, please. Oh, Granny brought something to my attention the last seven and See, what, what I got to do is I got to get a, 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 a picture of Mother Stallings up here because, you know, come on up here, Mother Stallings. Not a picture, but just me and you. Because, see, one day my mom going to be gone. This is the mother of the church right here. And what I wanted to do to rejoice in Jesus because a lot of people didn't get to see the 81-year-old last Sabbath. You know, so when they see her walk, there's a testimony to Jesus. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. It's a Hallelujah. testimony to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes. You're just waiting for the coming of the Lord, yes, ain't you? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just waiting for the coming of the Lord. Mother Stalin cooks, chop wood, love chopping wood. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Works hard and, and, and counsels the younger sisters how to be mothers and how to guide the house. Is that right? Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bless you, most darling. Isn't that all right? Yes, want me to get my chair, huh? And Tyler to hold that mic. <laughs> we bless the name of Jesus. You know, over the last few Sabbaths <clears throat> and um, study of the scripture, I've been talking a lot about rejection. <clears throat> and I'm going to continue that thought, even more so today. Um, well, we need understanding. And no doubt that God is gracious towards us and he gives us a lot of understanding. But understanding without the principles applied is ignorance. All of God's promises are yea and amen. However, all of God's promises are based on conditions. I make it sense. And all of God's promises are for his people. God is not the one that will renege on his covenant. 
He will perform his word. He will do it. But in order for you to get the victory and to understand the performance that God would give to his people in deliverance and salvation and healing, and there is also something required of you. And that is unconditional obedience. Because it comes with, I mean, it's just the truth. You understand what I mean? I got another example. Come on back up here, Sister Ashley. Back. She didn't come the first time, did she? <clears throat> I'm going to use her as an example again. Sitting over here. Now, this is not my daughter after the flesh, even though we do resemble. Can't you see the resemblance? But I treat her like my daughter in the flesh. Are you following me? This is my one of my young daughters. Are you following me? And, you know, as one of my young daughters, she, she not only receives me as her pastor, but as her father. Amen. Now, her father's over there. I'm a spiritual father. And she would tell you, boy, I bring it, don't I? Yes, sir, right between the eyes. Yeah, right between the eyes. <laughs> I bring it. Don't have no reservation about it at all either. When Sister Ashley, when God brought her here to us, and it was a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago that God brought her here to us, she was like the majority of the people who come to us. Messed up. Um, had no will to live. Why even live? You understand what I mean? Um, problems in her body, problems in her mind, problems spiritually. Are you following me? Now, if deliverance was in the knowledge of this world, then she could have stayed where she was. Isn't that right? If deliverance was in the doctors of this world, then she could have kept on going to the physicians. All right? Yes, sir. She would go to the doctor, like many people do, and they couldn't give her an answer why she had blood in her urine. No answer. The world can't give you answers to a lot of reasons why you have so much going on within you. This is supposed to be the place, the church, is where God's people are supposed to come for their salvation, for their healing, and for their deliverance. The prophet prophesied of the Messiah to come, Jesus, said that he will let the oppressed go free. He will preach deliverance to the captives. And I don't know any more more captive in this world than God's people. Amen. Captive by different sins, different things that they don't understand. Are you following me? That's why you have to go check out the uh, prophet Jeremiah. You need to read, read his writings and, and get them down in you so you'll know what a real true shepherd or a pastor really is. Are you following me? If deliverance was in that world out there, then they have all kinds of programs, physicians, and everything in order to bring about a change in her life. Because nobody goes to the hospital, to the doctor, because they want to be worse or continue to get worse. They want to go because they want to be delivered. They want to they want to experience what it means to be healed, pain-free, free. 